What's up everybody, Jack here from Half Chrome. Today I'm gonna to tell you about this. This is an all-in-one kit and inside we've got a really nice controller, a solid set of goggles, and of course a drone. It's a brushless loop from Beta FPV. It's the Meteor 75. And let's talk about this kit. It's an excellent kit to get started, but I think it has one fatal flaw. Stay tuned. All right, I'm gonna start with a quick flight just to kind of highlight the, the biggest issue I have with this drone, and that is the video transmitter. It just, it's terrible. Um, I got a ton of breakup and really not that far. Like you can see, I'm flying around my backyard and if I got into my neighbor's yard, more than like a hundred feet away it would break up to the point where I, I didn't know where I was going. I had to guess kind of just based on muscle memory and hope that, you know, I didn't land inside someone else's fence or in the water back there. You know, it, it's just, it's bad, right? There's, there's no way around it. Now, um, you can get slightly better reception. You can see I'm doing a little bit better here if you kind of angle that antenna upwards. And that, and that did help quite a bit, but still, you know, still I don't have the confidence to take this thing half as far as I would pretty much any other whoop. Now I like it, it's a fun whoop, it's not my favorite, that'd still be the Mobula 6. I like a lot of the Emacs stuff because you can do one or two S batteries, this is one S only. Now I'll do a full comparison of this to the Emacs kit, so if you're thinking about those two, uh, stay tuned, we'll get to that. Um, you know, another thing, I, I gotta give a shout out to Tweet FPV. mine was not flying in acro or angle, and that's because I had a broken switch, and I'll talk more about that later. Uh, there's some goofy modes in this thing that probably just shouldn't have happened. All right, so this is the Beta FPV Whoop Racing Advanced Kit number two. Um, now let's take a look inside. All right, let's start with the batteries. You get two 450 milliamp hour batteries. They're one ass batteries, and they have the BT 2.0 connector, which is good because that helps with uh, voltage drops or voltage sag. You get a little better performance than a traditional PH2 connector, but if you have a lot of PH2 batteries like I do, that's, you know, not positive because you can't uh, just swap them out. It also comes with this charger. This charger uh, just plugs in via USB and you can charge two batteries at once. And look at this, you can check the voltage on the cell. So that's kind of nice. You get a full set of extra props or 40 millimeter props and a tool to help you get them off. I got a couple of manuals here, one in Chinese, one in English, and a little card with some QR codes. Now, I didn't find these directions to be particularly useful, and uh, you know, their online support actually wasn't that great either. So I'll kind of walk you through the things you need to know. You also get a couple of antennas. They're standard dipole antennas. Eventually, you'll probably upgrade them, but uh, it's nice that you get two. That means we got diversity on this goggle set. So, of course, you get goggles. We'll take a close look at those in a second. You got your drone and, of course, a remote control. Now, this case itself is actually really nice. You got a place for everything you need and even a little zipper pouch on the inside to store all that extra stuff. All right, so let's start by talking about this. This is the Meteor 75 Lite drone. It is a, it's a brushless motor drone. You've got 1102 18,000 kV motors and they pack a punch on those 450 milliamp hour 1S batteries. Now it's 1S only and actually you have a silverware flight controller so you cannot uh, adjust things in beta flight. That's both good and bad if you ask me. It is really nice that you don't have to worry about binding and doing all that stuff. You can just basically pull this thing out plug it in and fly. Uh, you do probably have to check the settings on the goggles to make sure that the channel matches the VTX, but I'll show you how to do that. All right, so let's walk through it. And actually, this is actually from the camera on the drone. This will work with any drone. Left stick, left, right stick up, and then you get into the smart audio. Go to, use the right stick to get to the smart audio. You can change the power that way, 25, 200, 200 is better, right? Um, and then you can change and select your channel. I highly recommend you do this. Do not rely on the search feature. You'll get it wrong and the reception will be even worse. Motors are plugged, which is cool. Um, got a decent camera angle. It's not adjustable, so there is that. Uh, the VTX coming out the back. The biggest issue I have with this drone 
is the VTX, right? The video transmitter just isn't really that good. Um, it says it's switchable from 25 to 200 milliwatts. Uh, that didn't seem to make a difference for me, so who knows if it's actually switching, um, but you just get a little bit extra breakup than you would on probably most VTXs. The design of this is good. It is really darn durable. I've crashed it a few times for sure. You can probably see a little bit of grass still on there. Uh, but yeah, this is a solid little drone. It is only 1S, so no 2S, but certainly packs quite a punch on 1S. So a lot of fun to fly. All right, here are the goggles themselves. Like I said, there are two things you really want to look for in goggles, right? Does it have dual diversity, meaning two antennas? That's going to help get you better reception. These are upgradable, um, so you can get something better in the future. Um, and DVR, which it does. You put a little SD card in there, and you rec can record your flights. Uh, they're, it's a box goggle. I generally wear contacts, but I put on my glasses to see if they fit inside here, and they do. Um, the screens are 800 by 480, um, you know, so you get a good, nice, bright picture. Um, and these goggles are pretty solid. You know, they're not, um, you know, they're they're not these uh, Sky Zones that I fly with, but they're still pretty darn good and, you know, certainly suitable for a beginner. Let's talk about this. This is the Light Radio 2 from Beta FPV. Um, and it's really a nice controller. I really like how it feels. It's nice and small. If you play video games, you'll like this familiar uh, feel. There are four switches up here. Um, the two in the back are two positions, and the two in the front are three positions. You just hold and press. You hear that? It's got a haptic um, motor in there, so it kind of buzzes and things. Nice LED light. Uh, port here on the bottom so you can connect it uh, to your computer and use as a simulator and then a button on the back for setup and bind yes you can bind this to other drones and i did that it's d8 d16 fr sky protocol so i was actually flying my mobula 6 on this just to to make sure easy process um, you just push the bind button back here and it uh, will bind up it does use OpenTX, so you can go in OpenTX companion and change things around now i did have an issue with this radio this switch here wasn't working at all. Now, the switch being not working was a problem because when I first flew this drone, I could only fly it in the goofy race modes that they created for this drone. I don't even know why they did that. There's two modes, race A, race H. Don't bother with them. They're terrible. Um, I, I couldn't I couldn't fly with them. Um, and I actually could not get this into acro or uh, angle mode or leveling mode, which those are the two ways that I fly. Outside, I fly acro. Indoors, I fly angle, and that's what I would recommend for you, especially if you're a beginner. Um, and these switches are supposed to be set up to do so. Right? All right, I'll put up on the screen how to switch between all your modes, but basically what you need to know is this is your arm switch, and then all of these other ones, some combination of them will get you into these different modes. Eventually, I'll take this radio apart and figure out why this switch wasn't working, but I have heard that there have been quality control issues with this radio. Now, it's an excellent radio when it works and probably what I would recommend for most beginners to start with. In order for me to fly this in acro and angle mode, I just put it on this. This is probably the radio you want if you're going to upgrade. This is the Radio Master TX16S. It's an awesome radio. You can fly FR Sky stuff. You can fly Fly Sky Spectrum, um, even toy drones like SEMAs and Hubsons and MJXs you can fly in this thing. So this thing is awesome. If you want a full review, I've got one of those. Check it out on the channel. All right, so you want to get into flying FPV. You have two all-in-one kit options, right? You can go beta FPV or you can go Emacs. So how do you choose? Well, let's break down the components. When it comes down to it, um, the drones, they're both really good. Uh, Emacs has a few different drone options. Um, and actually, beta FPV has two. But they're, you know, the drones are all, they're all pretty good, right? So, okay. We'll give that even. Now let's look at the other components. Let's talk about these controllers. This is not even a contest. This beta FPV controller is 100 times better. Even with this broken switch, I'd still recommend this um, Light Radio 2 versus that from Emacs. These sticks are terrible. There's dead band. It's just, it's actually even hard to fly with this remote. Okay, now let's talk about the goggles, right? We've got dual diversity here. We have dual diversity here, but this one only, the Emacs one only ships with a singular antenna. Um, in terms of, you know, screen and whatnot, they're very comparable, but only the Emacs one has a DVR. So you're not gonna be able to record your videos with this Emacs one. So when it comes down to it, uh, two of the three components are better on this beta FPV versus this Emacs. And there's also, they both also have some extras and cases and things like that. I actually kind of give the nod to beta FPV on that as well. 
So if you are looking to get into flying FPV, this is what I'd recommend, right? Um, I'll, I'll show you some flight footage of this drone, this um, beta FPV drone flying, and it flies pretty darn well. Um, you can fly it in angle mode inside, fly it in acro mode outside. Um, you can do flips and rolls and tricks and stuff in acro. Avoid the race. I don't even know why they bothered with those race modes. Um, would have been a lot simpler had they not included them uh, because you do have four switches and you don't don't fly with those, right? Angle, acro, or perhaps even horizon, which is somewhere in between. That's what they should have done to put that on one of the three position switches. But yeah, this is a really good drone. It is a really good kit. Um, it is by far the best kit to get into if you want to learn how to fly FPV. And I really recommend you start with something small like this, a ducted drone versus something like this. This is this is my favorite FPV drone. It's a five inch with the digital uh, DJI FPV system. Uh, but this thing, I mean, these motors are awesome and powerful, but they're also dangerous and that drone is loud. So a whoop like this is a lot quieter and a lot safer and a great way to learn how to fly. I also recommend uh, if you've never flown Acro to get into a simulator with your computer, uh, use your radio. That's, that's another good point of this radio and uh, learn how to fly, right? Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys have questions about this or anything else, uh, leave them down in the comments below. I love responding to our fans, so uh, hit us up. Hey, if you haven't already checked out halfgrown.com, make sure you go there too. We've got tips, tricks, tons of reviews, and more. Everything from photography to FPV. Hey, good luck and happy flying.